Obscure games have always been one of my favorite topics in gaming. Games like James Pond codenamed Robocard, Sonic Pocket Adventure, the first game I even covered in a proper video was Bonanza Bros, and while a lot of these obscure games aren't very good, there's fun to be had in wondering why these games are so obscure and simply discovering something not many have. A lot of games are obscure for a very valid reason, they're either lacking substance or just mediocre video games, but there are also games that are forgotten with that reason, Super Noah's Ark 3D, Croc Legend of the Garbos, and again, Bonanza Bros. One of the fields I see discussed most when it comes to forgotten games is the PC. And yeah, totally. Games like the Museum of Anything Goes, Mario Teaches Typing, and a certain game called Alpha Waves, the first ever 3D platformer, which is taking my interest quite recently. Why am I bringing all this up? My connection to obscure games, the reason for being forgotten, and the crazy amount of weird PC games out there. I bring this up because there's been a very specific game that's been on my radar for a playthrough for quite a long time, almost a year. It's weird that's forgotten, as it's a platformer a part of the same series that has games crowned as some of the best. This game I'm talking about, as you can tell by the title, is Super Mario Bros. Special. It has so many reasons to be widely discussed. It's weird graphics, weird gameplay, the fast game speed, it's one of the few PC Mario games, and yet few people talk about it, and that makes it my job. First off, it's important to establish what exactly this game is, and for a very specific reason. Super Mario Bros. Special was released in 1986, whatever. But the reason I need to establish the game in the first place is because it has two different versions, released on the PC-88 and the Sharp X1. I'll be covering these games individually as they vary quite a bit in quality, but that's enough exposition, so I'm gonna jump into it with what I believe is the better version released, the PC-88 version. Holy fuck, this shit is rough. The first thing you'll notice when booting up the game is the extremely ugly graphics. I do think it has a certain charm to it, but that's just my personal opinion, and objectively this game looks horrible. My eyes don't exactly get hurt easily, I mean I love the look of the Virtual Boy games after all, but I think this is too much for some viewers, so I turned the contrast down a little bit. The music is also pretty weird, it's like they took the compositions of the original Super Mario Bros and slowed them down, it's super strange. Speaking of Super Mario Bros, I guess I should get this out of the way before diving in further. This is not a port or demake of Mario 1. This is a new game with new levels that uses PC renditions of Mario 1 graphics to make up its terrible presentation. In general though, PC games, at least when this was released, were ironically enough way more technically underpowered than consoles. Strange and limited color palettes as well as slow game speed played games like this back in the day, and it's weird to see the dynamic of consoles and computers completely flip over the past 40 years or so. I guess I should talk about that slow game speed thing first in regards to gameplay. While the Sharp X1 version has this issue, the PC-88 version has the complete opposite issue in that it runs way too fast. Speeding up and slowing down is very fast, but he starts pretty slow and ends up going at Mark 78 at max speed, which is reached in like a quarter of a second. My bigger issue, however, is the jumping, and just looking at it, you can see why. It's not that Mario doesn't jump high, of course he does, but it's that he reaches the peak of his jump in like half a second, and goes back to the ground in another half second. It's extremely jarring, and the control in general makes platforming a complete fucking nightmare. Mario also has this weird momentum quirk. I do not at all know how to describe it in a concise way. When you jump into a wall, the wall stops you obviously, but if you stop colliding with that wall at some point in midair, the momentum you had prior to hitting the wall is immediately restored instead of you having to build up to it again. It's super bizarre and not at all intuitive, and it's very hard to get used to. All of that adds up to this being some of the worst platforming in this series, and it's very hard as a result. In fact, I didn't even get past level 3 in my 40 minutes of playing. Things that add to the difficulty are 1. Super fast timer. It's not too bothersome, but you can't exactly take your time either. It runs like the rest of the game, way too fast. 2. Screen transitions. Unlike every other Mario game, the levels are split into individual screens, think Zelda. This would be fine, but rather than scrolling to the next screen like Mario 2, the game instead cuts to black and loads the next screen, making you play it as soon as it's fully loaded, and it can blindside players who aren't paying full attention. And 3. Background overlap. If you go over a background object, it can be hard to tell where you are because of the weird color palette, and this could have easily been avoided if there just wasn't any background objects. Overall though, this game is fucking terrible. It's very interesting, but it's no secret that it doesn't amount to a very good game at all. It's weird, it sucks, but it's great. As for the Sharp X1 version, holy fuck.
this might genuinely be like top five worst games I've ever played. I and I mean that. I can't be fucked making an introduction, so here we go. The one bonus I can see in this game is that the graphics are way better, but still not great. But even then, I can't give it that much of a bonus because I find it way less interesting visually. But everything else is just fucking horrible. You'll notice from looking at the footage right now that this version has the complete opposite problem to the PC-88 version. It runs way way too slow. While originally I thought this would be better off considering jumps are less bullshit to make, that point of view was quickly invalidated after an enemy came on screen because that game lags even more. This often makes it even less bearable than the other version because at least that was, you know, playable. But this is just too fucking slow and it is genuinely painful to play. Music still sucks, everything sucks, holy fuck. I want to give minimum spoilers for the whole retrospective here, but this game was scored at the very bottom for me. No doubt due to it being barely functional. I'm not wasting any more time on this travesty, good fucking god. But after that atrocity, how do I feel about these games? First off, I'm sorry this was a much shorter video. I was expecting to have a lot more to say, but when you can't even get past level 3, things like this just happen. I know I said the same thing happened with the Donkey Kong arcade game, but I was just too eager to talk about this game for whatever reason, it's just too interesting to me. But I still like the PC-88 version, despite being objectively terrible. It's weird to me as well, because I always heard from the few discussions of Mario Special Online that it was the better version, but after I conclude that it's not only the worst version, but the worst Mario game I'll talk about in the retrospective, at least as of now. Anyways, I can't be fucked giving a proper outro, bye bye, have a nice day.